Alrighty then, it's time for the ever exciting support lane. Yay. Which one? And it's Soraka, so you know it's doubly exciting. Which is two. Okay, so here's the thing. The Juggernaut meta is basically demanding the bands all be Juggernauts and Gangplank and Fiora and that kind of crap. So, right now, most band phases are the most boring shit ever, and you got kind of the same compositions every now and then. Fortunately, this game is not exactly the same compositions, but they're terrible compositions. The enemy team has a better one than mine. And I was forced into being support. So, playing the only support I have and or own on this account, I went with Soraka, and she's boring as hell to watch, but you're gonna watch it with me. Now anyways, so I know that the Moomoo is trying to do Grom, so I try to snipe it from him, I fail, so I kind of hang around a little bit because I know he's going to do blue right after, and the board isn't anywhere coming by, so I go up to the Moomoo, stab his little bitch ass with bananas, and then he gives chase to me, and I just kind of just run off. It's like, I don't even know why he, they bothered, just make Bard chase me and just Moomoo go back immediately there. So, it's slow to Moomoo down, and I know Bard is going to be waiting for the tri in the tribal bush, so I just kind of scare him away with Q, and then I go into the lane after I le see him leave. So, I kind of slow down a Moomoo for whatever that's worth, right? It's, I guess it, I would count 200 health away from a Moomoo. It means at least he's not going to be able to gank right after red, unless he goes back after blue, goes in red, and whatever, still. So, anyways, the thing is... For when it comes to support, you know it's the most boring ass lane in the game. I mean, like, yeah, it could be fun to play, but it's not exactly exciting to watch. And not yet, and so Soraka is kind of a next level of boringness, because as Soraka, you're basically a tumor on your teammate. You're just kind of there. You're a malignant tumor that sticks by and sometimes returns the nutrients you take from their blood. So occasionally, I'll heal, I'll heal Corky. I'll throw cues around and try to harass and. It just kind of sucks that this is the matchup. If it was something like Caitlyn and Soraka, you'd see me pushing the lane with her and just kind of poking at the enemy team. But Corky against Callista and Bard, it's just sort of slow and we're just trying to survive. Now, anyways, Soraka's been seeing play in some LCS matches and I've actually seen a few Soraka bans already. And that's the funny thing is that she hasn't really changed from where she used to be uh, ever since her rework. She's just this really annoying character. I mean, people don't want to play her because she's boring, so no one really gets to see that she's great or anything. And, hell, like, even when she does well, she doesn't, it's not really flashy, and there are counters to her. It's just nobody wants to deal with it. So I'm going to assume that for, for right now you'll see a lot of Soraka bans just because, again, nobody wants to deal with that shit. Like Bard and Callista, if I was playing some other support, we probably would have been dead a few times already. But thanks to Soraka's ambulance healing and annoying ass cues, I don't get to die. Now watch this, the, the Rumble's already three kills in. His CS sucks ass, so that's, uh, but both factors are actually going to play something in this game. The Rumble is really bad at CS and he's roaming around and basically destroyed us. So he's becoming a massive threat and he's going to have to be watched out for. The Amumu is doing well ganking but mostly because my teammates sort of just fall into his hands. Like the Garen just sort of pushing without boots or any wards or anything so he dies basically for free. And as you can see my composition isn't all that great. We don't have any initiation, we don't have any crowd control, I mean we do have some but it's not reliable or good. So we're going to have trouble. But here's the thing about Soraka, and this is kind of why she's going to be important in this fight. The, the Bard just kind of walked up to us, blew his abilities, used a really poor ultimate, and then me and Corky were able, are able to turn the tide. It's like they take so much damage and then they get annihilated. Pew, dead right there. Then we turn on the bar. I use my ultimate to heal. Bar dies. And then all of a sudden Rumble comes in and, you know, sodomizes both of us. So he gets himself a double kill here. By the way, the thing is, the that fight right there was a very good example of how we're supposed to win this fight. My team doesn't have initiation. The, the closest we have to an initiation is maybe a very fortunate... Victor stun or snare or whatever that thing is. By the way, this this literally completely fucks up. So she fucks up her animation here. It's like if she didn't heal, she could have plucked him with an auto attack and maybe you would have burned him. But whatever, I don't care. So we don't have initiation. We don't exactly have crowd control either, and we don't really have any types of uh, 
let's call it synergy with our team composition. So the best bet we have is that the enemy team fucks up their initiation and we're able to counter them. And the way the Soraka is going to work in this is, and I justified her to myself when I'm in Champion Select, is that I'm going to work as a big subtraction or like a, a, a negation of whatever the enemy team tries to do. Like, you know this, the enemy, let's say Ezreal hits my Corky with a Q. I mean, there's no Ezreal, but I'm using this as an example. Ezreal shoots somebody, I heal the person up, basically negated whatever the hell Ezreal tried to do, of course, in exchange for a bit of my health and some mana. But the way that Soraka works, or at least her rework worked, is that she has a lot of negation powers. Her Q can negate some of the damage dealt to her and she deals some damage to the enemy team. Not a big deal. W is a huge spammable heal. It's basically, you, I, in, in a way, I negate the damage dealt to my teammate and transfer it over to myself. So, in, in a way, it can work as sort of a, let's call it an exchange program of some kind. E is a silence, a really strong silence that a lot of people underestimate that becomes a snare if you stand in it, though most people don't end up standing on it. And the ultimate is the biggest... Uh, fuck you to bad initiations and that's actually one of the things i want you to look out for the laning phase i didn't talk about it much because come on it's a laning phase it's boring as shit so it's uh, i'm gonna talk about the team fights a bit more here we get a free kill gun against Callista. she was not careful at all we snuck up on her and she just got destroyed corky clears the lane and then goes home well yeah clear pushes a little bit and it's gonna go home and i I hate that I did this. Even to myself, when I was on stream, I was telling myself, this is dumb. I follow the Nidalee. I know Rumble's around the corner, but we wanted to snipe the Bard. He seemed like a juicy snipe. Unfortunately, I trapped myself because I know Callista's coming up the river, but I figure she's the lesser of the threats that's coming up. So, I died to Callista. Still, though, that's actually kind of a funny thing, is that the Rumble burned too many resources going after a Nidalee kill that... He, that Amumu and Bard fell prey to the victor rather easily. So that's a good turnaround. And it's mostly because Rumble burned his resources in a very inefficient way. And again, that's going to be very important for us in this game. The only way we'll have any team fights in our favor is if the enemy team initiates poorly and we turn it around. And again, Nidalee and Soraka are very good at this, mostly because we got the heals. We have counter initiation powers and my silence can do a lot of, have a lot of value. And my ultimate, especially when it comes to a Mumu, is if a Mumu makes a poor initiation, just ult up, bam, completely negates that whole thing. In fact, here, like, uh, Callista is actually gonna get caught. She goes a little crazy. I walk up to her, I silence her, and I exhaust her, and then my teammates sort of go in. Well, we don't have that exact damage to kill her. Amumu um, goes in with his ultimate, I use my ultimate, negates it. And the enemy team is in a hard, like, I don't even know their positioning. They can't do anything, so my teammate's a team is able just to sort of waltz in there. Renekton jumps to the side, but of course, my, the MVP is kind of in a bad spot for him to go to, so he takes tons of tons of free damage. Amumu um, jumps back onto me, and... Even though I die, it was actually not worth it. I'm a support, and he and Bard had to die to, tie, to get that kill on me. So that was a really bad exchange, and that's a good thing for my team. Because again, I know I'm repeating myself, we need those fights. We need the fights in which the team is disorganized, and we're able just to heal back up the shit, the, the, all the few things they actually do to us. Here, though, I, I believe this one's actually a poor fight. We're poking at the enemy team. We can't actually get any leeway because we're split up. And we just, they just kind of run off. Fortunately, though, we're able to push in because Garen is just completely dominating the Renekton and taking care of him. At least, he, at least he's dominating him now. Rumble ults in. Complete waste of his ultimate. Just 100% waste. So now it's on cooldown. We know that. We'll be able to push back. Corky's hanging by the side, just trying to snipe a few hits in. Rumble gets close, doesn't do anything. And even though he's 6-1 and one and he has a, a bit of CS, he's not that strong. I mean, he can do damage, but I mean, he's not that strong when it comes to team fights. If without his ultimate. He's got no defensiveness. So he's like, if he gets caught, he gets killed. Anyways, here we go. 
It's a Bard completely wastes his ultimate for some goddamn reason. Mumu's trying to sneak behind, but we see him coming. We throw our, 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 our pokes or whatever. The enemy team burns a lot of their abilities on the Garen. A Mumu gets silenced. Renekton dies for free because his teammates aren't with him. A Mumu gets a really good ultimate, but his team is in no position to actually take advantage of that. So he gets killed for basically free as well. We chase them up, we go for the tower, and it's just a really bad situation for the enemy team. I'll re reiterate that. The enemy team burned a lot of crap on the Garen. This is kind of a bad thing of a juggernaut stuff. Yeah, they got a lot of threat, and yet you still can't kill them. So Garen took a huge beating. They burned a lot of abilities. Rumble had burned his ultimate already prior to that. Bard wasted his ultimate completely like an idiot. And in fact, watch this part too. God damn. A Mumu goes in to get the red, but ends up having to burn his ultimate trying to run away, burns his flash, and then he still dies. So he burned flash and his ultimate for a red buff that he still lost. And thanks to that, and thanks to Garen's teleport on the minion allowing the tower to basically be distracted, we get a tower and another inhibitor. That's just such a poor use of abilities. It's like, I want you to re-watch those fights and just see how much the enemy fucked up and we were able, to be, thanks to me in Italy, just kind of reset that shit. Here, Bard fucks up their initiation again. He saves us from the Rumble Ultimate. Then we put our shit on top of the of the Bard Ultimate and negate anything. Like, uh, Amumu tries to go in, he gets silenced, and then he gets snared, and then he gets stunned by Victor's uh, W. So it's just so many poor initiations, and we were able to win thanks to that. And thanks to our negation powers. So hooray for Soraka and Team Healy Pokey. Remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. I have a few sponsors that are helping me maintain this channel, such as Crunchyroll, Pro Build Systems, and Loot Crate. I have links to these services in the description below. Using them and using my codes directly supports my channel.